We're going to hear from Ollie now. So uh, why don't you go and grab your Bible, gold lined one, obviously, if you've got it. <laughs> but um, or obviously you can get your phone out, check the Bible passages that we we're referring to this morning. Um, Ollie's going to use some videos as well, actually, from um, a local organisation called Speak, Speak Life, oh, yeah, who good. communicate the gospel so effectively. So, um, mm. yeah, go sit down, grab a cup of tea um, and let's enjoy the word of God together. And God held in his hand a small globe. Look, he said. The sun looked. Far off, as through water, he saw a scorched land of fierce colour. The light burned there, crusted buildings cast their shadows, a bright serpent, a river uncoiled itself, radiant with slime. On a bare hill, a bare tree saddened the sky. Many people held out their thin arms to it, as though waiting for a vanished April to return to its crossed earth. The sun watched them. Let me go there. He said. If it cost you everything, would you go there? That's the question asked by Speak Life's Christmas film for 2020. It has been years in the making. Ever since I first came across a haunting Christmas poem called The Coming, I knew that I wanted to make this animation. The Coming is by Welsh poet R.S. Thomas. It begins with the words, and God held in his hands a small globe. Look, he said, the sun looked. And what we then see in the poem is a world that is darkness and light. It is dangerous and compelling. It is beautiful and broken. It's the world that we know, a world we love and a world that will be the death of us. The poem asks us to consider the world from God's perspective. It imagines a conversation between the Father and the Son, where the Son of God sees the world, where He loves the world, and where he knows that the world will be the death of him. So the question is, if it cost you everything, would you go there? I mean, we are born into the world, we have no say. But if you had the choice to join this merry-go-round, and if you knew it would cost you everything, would you go there? Christmas is God's answer to that question. At Christmas, the Son of God says, let me go there. Let me join the world, this world that is darkness and light. It's dangerous and compelling. It's beautiful and broken. Let me go to my people who have wandered from my light and who have embraced darkness. Let me move towards them personally so that my healing light can transform them. The final scene of the poem, the final scene of the film, has the Son of God at a lonely bare tree. 
It's called a cross-boughed tree, in R.S. Thomas's words. This is the place where our darkness met the light of the world. That is the place where Christmas leads. Christmas leads to Easter. When the Son of God decides to enter our world, He decides to shoulder all our burdens, to experience all our suffering, to take on all our darkness. He does that at the cross and then rises to share His light. It cost Him everything. But this is why He said, let me go there. As the Bible puts it, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So here's the question. If you had to shoulder the burden of the whole world, if you had to sacrifice yourself for the world you'd made, would you go there? The Son of God did. And at Christmas we celebrate that He embraced us. He embraced everything that that involved. He went there, no matter the cost. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let me go crack towels broken flood gates open darkness spoken it's true let me go incredible presentation of the good news of the gospel from the team at Speak Life there. Glenn, thank you so much for putting that together. It is an absolute joy and privilege to speak to you this morning on the 20th of December in our build up to Christmas 2020, in all the strangeness of the year that we've just had, to be able to speak to you, the church today, to you that may be watching and listening for the very first time to a presentation of the Christian gospel. The good news is that for each of us who choose to believe in him, to ask us that exact question, would you go there? Would you take upon the burdens and the sins of the world if you had the choice? It's the incredible good news of the gospel. It's the incredible good news that we get to proclaim and consider as we build up to Christmas once again. What does it really mean for a child to be born? What does it really mean for the savior of the world to be born in a manger? What does it really mean for the shepherds to hear that the savior has come and to go and visit him? What does it really mean for the wise men to arrive? What does it really mean for Mary and Joseph? What does it really mean for me and for you today? What does it mean to consider the fact that he chose us? He chose to come here. He chose to enter into our darkness and into our broken humanity to bring salvation and to proclaim good news and to restore people to their relationship with the living God, to bring peace to all mankind. 
See, we've had a chance this morning. We, we listened to an account of the story of Christ's birth this morning from Luke's gospel. It was read to us so well by friends and members of this church together. And I want us to try and tie together now some of the words that we read in Luke 2 earlier, some of the hymns and the carols that we've been singing together and proclaiming together this very morning, and the presentation of the gospel that Glenn so clearly just brought through that poem and the animation that you saw of the fact that a son says to his father, let me go there. Let me do something about this. Let us not be ones who just observe from a distance and watch the experiment of humanity taking place, but instead step into the very circumstances that we experience here on this earth and to come and bring peace to the people of God. Wow, that's incredible good news. So let's, let's consider some bits together. Let's just walk through some parts of Luke's gospel now, shall we? We heard it read to us earlier from Luke chapter two, that when the good news was brought, when the proclamation was made that the savior had been born, angels descended and they spoke to shepherds on a hillside. The outsiders of the community, those that no one else would have ever sent an invite to, those that would have never ever thought they would have been welcome at the royal birth of the son of God. Shepherds, outsiders, ones that most others forgot about, God chooses to proclaim good news to them first and foremost. But what does he say to them? Luke 2 verse 10, and the angel said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Are you included in that? Are we part of all of the people of God? Are we part of all of the people of humanity, which now has been proclaimed this good news of great joy? Good news of great joy that the Savior has been born. That in the, in the mess of the world that we live in, in the darkness and the brokenness of it, there is good news because a light has, has come. A light has shone in the darkness. The one who is able to solve and take upon himself the burdens of this world has now arrived center scene. Jesus is here. The Son of God has been born. Christian, does your heart soar once again as you consider the fact that he came for us? If you're looking in and wondering for the very first time, you will never hear any better news than this, that the Savior, the one who created the world in the very beginning, chose to come and be part of it, like you and me, to enter our humanity, to come and restore and bring us back into relationship with the God who loves us and who made us. That is great news of good, of, that is good news of great joy that is proclaimed. Investigate it, consider it, Think about the consequences for our own lives in that. And what does it do to these shepherds? It causes them to say, I must see for myself. I can't just hear good news. I must see good news for myself. Once I've heard it proclaimed, I must run down to go and discover, is this thing true? Is this thing, really? This, this seems too good to exist. This seems too good to consider. And so they run to the stable to go and find the child that has been born, the savior of the world, the one who entered fragile as a child just as ad spoke last week taking on the frailty of humanity to stand amongst us to enter it's the way that he chose to enter humanity through being born just like us into a vulnerable situation into a stable to be there to be wrapped in swaddling to lie in a manger it's how the god of the universe chooses to enter the scene do you realize that changes everything that he came, that he arrives, that he steps into the circumstances. And you see, as a church, we've been considering for the last couple of months together, really, what does it mean to be those who know that we're loved by God, that the trajectory, the, the compass of our heart is set towards one of response to the love of God towards us. He loves us first and foremost. And how do we now respond to him? We respond to him out of love out of worship, out of adoration for who he is and all that he's done. And then we consider the fact that then we must turn our hearts towards others and show that deep love that we have for Christ towards the world in which we live in, to everyone, every day, everywhere. And then we started to consider some of the things that we love as a community. And you see, the thing is, let's remember this, love is not just a feeling. 
Love is not just an emotion. Love is not just a moment in which I get the hairs on my back of my neck or my arm go up. I start to feel this warm feeling inside. It's not just sitting and watching love actually and hearing the music play and something warm and fuzzy happens here. Love is a choice. Love is a moment in which Jesus says, I'm gonna show what love really is because I'm gonna step in. I'm gonna step into the hurt and the brokenness of this world and I'm gonna demonstrate love by saying, I will go there. I'm not gonna leave it to them to try and make their way towards me. I'm gonna step into their circumstance and situations and I'm gonna make a way for people to reconnect and to restore their broken relationship with their living God. That's what love is. Love is not just a, a feeling or an emotion, it's an action which Christ displays in his birth in the good news of Christmas. He comes to be amongst us as people. And what does it do? Let's carry on the story in Luke 2 a little bit further. It says, when they start to realize this, the great multitude of heavenly hosts, the angels start to proclaim and they say this of God's glory, verse 14, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This good news comes to bring you peace. Not peace and quiet. I'm not just saying peace and quiet to sit there in stillness. Peace of knowing that where there was hostility, that where there was conflict, that where things felt incomplete. It's actually the, the, the Jewish word for peace is shalom. And this idea of shalom is all about completeness. It's about fullness. It's about restoring something that felt incomplete. That's what the savior of the world in his act of love towards us, of him choosing to step into our humanity does. He comes to bring peace. Peace with those with whom he is pleased. The living God's Jesus Christ longs to bring you peace today. Peace on earth. You know, every beauty contest you listen to, what's the question that people get asked? What would be your biggest hope for the world? What would you want to achieve? World peace. You ask John Lennon to sing you a song, what's he gonna sing about? Imagine a world where one day there'll be peace, where all mankind will be united with one another once again. You see, the danger of this is that we believe that we are able to restore peace to the world in which we live in. I can't. Why is there not peace in the world? Because of me and because of you. We contribute to this fact and this idea that we are unable to restore peace, first and foremost between us and God. And as a result, because of our lack of peace between us and God, us and one another. It's always conflict and fallout and things feel incomplete. That might resonate or echo with you today. This feeling of, I feel incomplete. I feel uneasy. I feel at conflict. I feel out of peace at this time. Well, what's good news to you? Good news to you is that the son of God came to bring peace on the earth. He came to restore peace. And how did he do it? He did it by restoring relationship between us and our Father in heaven who created us for purpose and intention and made us out of his great love for us. And because of his great love for us, he sent his one and only son. The son came to dwell among us to restore relationship once again between God and his people. And I tell you what, as someone who, who has found peace with God, I now know that that has enabled me to find peace with others, to be, find peace with my neighbor, to find peace with my enemy, to find peace with the outsider, to find peace with one that I have no other, no other way of connecting with. And now I'm able to find peace because I'm at peace with God. See, again, what does the world teach me? The world teaches me to find peace, I must empty myself. That's how I find inner peace by stopping and reflecting and finding some sort of sense of em emptying everything that is in here out of me so I can be at peace with the world that I live in and with those around me. Do you wanna know what the, the good news of the gospel is? I don't find peace by emptying myself. I find peace by filling myself with the goodness and knowledge of who God is and all that he's done. 
See, when I fill my mind with the truth of who God is and all that he's done on my behalf, he doesn't just intellectually fill this, he fills my heart because he now says, when you choose to follow me, I'm now gonna live within your inmost being. I'm now gonna fill you up with my own presence. The power of the Holy Spirit is now gonna be at work in your heart and I'm gonna fill you with a piece of what it means to be known by God and loved by him so that you can give that and emanate that peace to the world around you. Unless we have peace ourselves, how can we ever bring peace to anyone else? See, Jesus says that he is here to come and be our peace, to come and bring peace to our hearts, to, to, to swap conflicts with one another to peace with one another and restoration and reconciliation. You see, again, this is what the story of Christmas brings. And as Glenn so well pointed out in that video and in that song and in the poem that we read, the story of the good news of the gospel isn't just that a child is born, but that a child would die in our place. That this story would eventually lead to a cross in which Jesus interacts with all of the brokenness and the darkness and the fallenness of our humanity and he engages with it fully. Not partially, he fully engages with it. He adopts it upon himself and he takes upon himself to the cross the fallenness and the brokenness of this world. And he says, I'm going to deal with it on your behalf. I'm going to bear the wages of sin upon myself to set you free, to bring you peace between you and God. And as a result, peace between you and others. See, that's how the story goes and that's how it ends. And so when we start to consider things like the good news that Christ is born to dwell amongst us as humanity, I can't ever just end there. I must consider to where the story ends. And do you want to know the really best bit of where the story ends? If you want to consider and continue reading this book, it doesn't just lead me to a cross. Eventually, it leads me to a great banqueting table and a new heavens and a new earth when Christ returns and make all things new. When there's no more disease or famine there's no more sadness or sickness. There's no more loss or fear or anxiety. Where is complete shalom and peace and wholeness as he comes to make all things new, to restore all that he made in the very beginning to how he always intended it to be so that God could now dwell with his people. And you get invited to come and be part of that story too. You get to consider the things that you may have heard this morning, that you may hear over this season, that you may have heard a hundred times. And you get, to, you get to consider them and to take them into your own heart and to choose to say, I follow him and I put my hope and trust in Christ and Christ alone. He's the one that comes to restore peace to me and I choose to believe that. And I choose to receive all of the peace and the wholeness and the fullness that Christ freely gives on my behalf. And why does he do it? Because he loves us. Because of his great love for us. The final thing, Luke 2 verse 19. Just want you to hear Mary's response to this. So the good news is heralded by the angels. The shepherds hear it. The shepherds run to the side. The angels proclaim that he comes to bring peace to all mankind, to all with those that with him is pleased. And Mary, the mother, she's sitting there. And what does she do in verse 19? It says, Mary treasured up all these things. She pondered them in her heart. That is my greatest desire for you today. That you would treasure up all these things. Hold on to the promises of all that God has done and all that and in exactly who he is and his great love for you and treasure them. Treasure you hold on to. And just don't just leave it on the side. You know where it is. You hold on to those things and you treasure it in your heart and you ponder them. Again, if you're looking in for the very first time, maybe you're joining us for this Christmas service together today at King's. Thank you so much for coming and joining. But ponder these things. To ponder means to reflect and to think and to consider. Consider if this is true. Investigate it, look into it for your very self. Join us, continue to ask questions. Comment here onto the live stream as you may be watching it. Reach out to us as a church and ask the questions, ponder them in your heart and consider who Christ is. So I tell you what, he's so much more than the nativity story that you might have heard before tells you just a baby, meek and mild, that lays in a manger. See, this is the saviour of the world, 
that comes to restore peace to all mankind. One who comes not just to be one that proclaims peace, but the one who gives you peace and who offers it freely for all who would choose to believe. Do you, like Mary, want to treasure it in your heart today? Because it's open and it's free for you to receive. God is so good and worthy to be praised. It's been such a joy to be able to join with you together today. Let's continue to sing and to worship and to proclaim the good news of who God is, Christians. As we live out these next few days, as we build up over the Christmas period, let's not just get preoccupied with presents and trees and dinners and, and where we are and what we've got to travel to and what's next on TV. Let's consider and treasure in our hearts the truth of who Christ is and all that he's done on our behalf. Because we are those who are now not just called to receive good news, but be to those who proclaim good news from the highest. We're meant to be those who run from the scene of the nativity, who run from the scene of the stable and proclaim to all who would choose to believe. What was it? All people. It will bring great news of joy. Let's proclaim it from the rooftops today. The Saviour has been born. Amen.